tell you later. The show where we guarantee a laugh or your money back. Thanks to all those who support us on Patreon. By the way, there's always room for more. And don't forget to like and subscribe to their channel. We haven't got a title song for this show, so we're singing this thing instead. Okay. It's really just a substitute. Nonetheless, a melody may stay in your head. Oh, I hope so. Because it's a tune. It's a tune. You'll love to croon. You'll love to croon. Ah, but there's one thing you should know. We have to confess we do not possess a title song for this show. Ain't it peculiar? Believe it or not. We haven't got a title song for this show. Oops. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Tell You Later on the Road. As you can see, we are not at the Tell You Later studios. In fact, we aren't in a studio at all. We're not in a hotel room. We're in a house in a kitchen, in the kitchen of Ms. Diane Ingolia. Hello. Yes. <laughs> and, and you're probably thinking, who's Who? Diane Ingolia? <laughs> what? Well, as you know, I only pick very special people for Aww. the Tell You Later show. Thank you. And for, before we get started, I want to thank all the patrons, uh, patrons on Patreon who support the show. Um, thanks for, for all you do. Those who've been uh, buying Tell You Later merch. Uh, the Merchulator website. <laughs> that thank you for that. That's awesome. We really appreciate it. If you haven't uh, checked it out at Patreon.com, tell you later. There's different tiers. There's benefits you get quarterly, and you get uh, special episodes and no ads, which you might have here. But we're glad you're here, and I am glad to be here with Diane. So I'm going to um, tell you why we wanted to have Diane. Tell on me why. I'm going to tell you why. Tell me why. Diane, I want to be Diane when <laughs> I grow up because <laughs> Diane has an amazing story. Her whole <laughs> life is a fantastic story. She's just this like mom slash creative dynamo hostess to the stars she works out here in colorado springs at focus on the family correct and uh she has amazing stories to tell she's done put on events met incredible people and i just want her to share her personality with you <laughs> and her heart Aww. so you can see why this world is better off wow. because she's here holy okay so if that isn't a big enough build up Oosh. you know because she's letting me stay over so <laughs> that's, that's it, yeah. the only reason she I made me dinner her. so yeah. you know i gotta do this sleeping stuff, in my bed you know not my bed but <laughs> in our bed you own the bed I own you the do bed. own the bed I do, I do, so I do. okay <laughs> so Diane actually yes. is from California. I am. Before she moved here with her husband, Roger. Yay. Who I, he may pop in. I don't know. Mm. He might because they're both incredibly attractive people on oh, top of being stop. very nice and handy. <laughs> what is happening You're here? very handy. Oh. You are very handy. <laughs> and they make costumes. Okay, so first of all, um, she has some great stories. The first story is, how did you get your job at oh Focus, Oh, my goodness. Diane? I can't believe you asked that question, but I'd be happy to answer it. Because she's a, she's a renegade. <laughs> she's she's like a, a, she has a, she has a history. She has a record. Maybe an orange jumpsuit with numbers across <laughs> the Tell us about it. Oh, goodness. Well, you see, we moved up here from California. When we first got here, we were told, if you're from California or Florida, the police don't like you and they'll pull you over. And I thought I never heard of such a thing before. Oh, so I'm taking my daughter to volleyball practice and I'm just driving the speed limit and I hear woo and I thought what? Maybe it's for someone else. Nope, it was for me. Pull over, the cop gets out, put down the window and I go hello officer and he goes do you know why I pulled you over? No sir I don't. He goes you have California plates and I went oh my goodness 
it's true. Oh, thank you. I didn't believe it was true, officer. Thank you. You thought that he wanted to pull you over because you're from California. And it was because I had California plates. And he said, are you planning on living here? Yes, sir, we are. And he said, then you better get those plates changed. Well, it's a Friday. And he said, if you don't get them changed by the end of today, I'm going to check on Monday. And if you have not changed those plates, I'm going to put a bench warrant out for your arrest. That's a little harsh. I didn't even know what a bench warrant was. And I'm like, a bench warrant? What did I... Okay, so Roger's working up in Castle Rock, so I give him a call, honey, this guy in the bed, in the bed. I don't even know what that is. And he's like, well, then just go register the car. So drive down to the So DMV. you move to Colorado. Right. And the reason I'm having her tell this story isn't just because it's hilarious, but also because it's, a, you know, a, wor- a warning if you're going to change states. So you were already living in we here. Were, we had just moved like three weeks before. Three, okay. So it hadn't been a, a long enough time for us to actually go through changing our So when license. you change states, you got to re-register your yes, vehicle. Yes, your vehicle. Okay. But I, I, we were dragging our feet. Who would think that? Went down to the DMV. It was except in, for Colorado. Except for who hate California and people from Texas. Theoretically. Theoretically. So Allegedly. I, well, maybe not, but... Not then, anyway. So I go down this strip mall, and I'm like, this is the DMV. There's nobody there. Can you imagine that? Nobody there except for me walking in. I have to change my registration. And they're like, okay. Uh, well, you want to do your license? Okay. And they said, we don't have any tests. But you're from California, so I'm sure you're a great driver. So let me just take your picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they took my picture and taped it onto a thing with the light. I go, this is my license. Reached in a box and pulled out my license plates. And here's my... Okay, so now, ta-da, I'm a registered Colorado driver. That wasn't hard. No, on a Friday. And I thought that was kind of bizarre. We're not in Kansas anymore. So then on Saturday, same volleyball practice, same daughter. So I'm driving down the street and... There was this minivan that was in the lane next to me, and maybe I wanted that lane, and maybe I moved over a little too soon, and maybe I hit them just a little bit. And so they pulled over, and... <laughs> there goes the assumption that you're from California, you're a good driver, right? <laughs> there goes that theory. It was out the window, so then, literally. So then they pulled over, I pulled behind them, so they get out. Well, I'm from California. I am not going to get out of my vehicle until the police get there because maybe she hit me. Well, no, not really, but maybe she did <laughs> on purpose. So I'm not getting out. So they're like, you know, get out of here. And I'm like, no. And a lady comes out <laughs> of her house. Your daughter's in the car? No, she had already dropped her off, thankfully. So a lady comes out of the house in this little neighborhood. She's got a box of cleaner and I'm crying. And she brings me some lemonade. And I'm like, where am I? This is bizarre. This is a setup. So the police finally show up. Well, the... Re- let me just say, backtrack. The reason you left California in the first place is because there was a lot of gang violence yes. and activity. Yes. And you wanted your kids to move to and a safer place. So you were in the already... high schools and barbed wire. Right. So moving here with bringing was... you lemonade when you're in an it just seemed out of place at that time. Way at, who does that? I mean, who does that? So uh, police came. We exchanged license. Ex- you know, to insurance company. The whole blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, okay, well, it's probably not too bad, but okay, thank you, all right, I'm good. Drive away. Monday, call to report my accident. Mm -hmm. Insurance company. Oh, I see you changed your registration from California to Colorado. Yes, I did that on Friday, or I would have gotten a bench arrest. And oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Bench warrant. Oh, yeah, that's the one. I didn't even know what that, I still don't even know what that is. (laughs) And they're like, oh, I'm sorry, we don't do business in Colorado. Which made me... So insurance dropped you right then and an there. An uninsured driver. <laughs> oh, oh, you've got your new uh, Tell You Later tote Isn't bag. Isn't cute? I love yeah, it. Did that. you get that at Merchelator? I sure did. Merchelator.com. It's so cute. It, look. Super cute. Tell Ya Later bag. And That's it's got awesome. everything in it. Do I they got... have hats? So then I get in the mail that I have to appear at court. For being an uninsured driver and having an accident. That's like the cop's fault, right? Yeah, (laughs) see, he did that to me. So we have a court date, go down to the court, and I'm standing in line with all these people, and I'm like, 
oh my gosh, where am I? So the people in front of me are chatting and I'm like, well, you know, I'm gonna make friends while I'm here. So I say to the lady in front of me, so what are you in for? And she's like, well, I bounced five checks and they finally caught up with me. The girl in front was 15. She stole her family's car. She got drunk. She was hit and run. And so I'm like, wow. So then there's this really large fella behind me all tatted. And I thought, well, he, maybe I'll make friends with him. So I turn around and I go, I, I, and just when I go, I, I, Roger goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm making friends with the people here. And he goes, just stand here. So I'm like, oh, okay. So oh, oh, I have to stand and wait my turn. So we finally get Both up. of us have a problem we being still. Right, being still and not making friends. Yeah, I mean, right I mean there. if you're there. They're through the line. I mean, who knows how long I'm going to be there. And we're supposed to comfort people who yes, are in distress. Yes, nobody asked me what I was in for, but you know. So I finally get up district attorney and he pull up my d driving record, my California driving record, and the, he goes, wow, your record is completely clean. You don't even have a parking ticket. I said, I know. And he said, but did you have insurance? Well, you saw my record. I don't even have a parking ticket. <laughs> and he goes, but did you have insurance? But we thought we did, but did you? I guess not. So he goes, well, you not only get a ticket for reckless driving, there's a fine, and you are uninsured, and there's a fine, and you have to do 40 hours of community service. That's insane. So they said you have to go up and talk to your social worker. <laughs> so now I have to go up a couple flights in the building, and I have to wait. And you at the courthouse? It's the courthouse, and there's all my friends. I'm like, there's my friends. <laughs> Well, there's the bounce check, yeah, lady. Yeah. Oh, so look, there's the little girl who, you know, stole yeah. her parents' car. So it's finally my turn. So I get up. And so I sit down, and she goes, I see you're an uninsured driver. I know, but we thought she didn't care. So she goes, here's a list of places you can, you know, do your 40 hours. So Salvation Army, Disabled Veterans. And so I said, you know, focus on the family just moved up here. And they're a nonprofit. Do you think I could volunteer there? She goes, they're not going to let you in. And I said, well, can I try? She goes, well, all right, here's your papers. And if you don't have these back within 24 hours. Boy, they don't give you much time to do stuff in well, Colorado, do they? We're going to put a bench warrant out for your arrest. <laughs> I'm like, here's what the bench warrant. Well, is <laughs> Again with the bench, bench warrant. warrant. I didn't know. It's like, like, what do you do? You like, you own a bench in a park? <laughs> I mean, do you have to pay for a bench in a park? <laughs> I don't know. Well, with your name, donated <laughs> by yes, the woman who is uninsured. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what this is. So we just happened to know the head of um, the human resource department at Focus because he went to our church. And so I call and I said, okay. I'm a criminal. I know. Can I come up and meet you? Do you have something that we could do? And he goes, yeah, come on up. So we drove slowly because I'm still uninsured and <laughs> no one would touch insured. me because I'm uninsured. The insurance rates were unbelievable, unbelievable. So, oh, so the thing is you have to apply before you cancel your old insurance? Is that well, we how, how, how are you supposed to do it? Well, we, we thought it would slop over. Right, but how are you supposed to do it? Well, we thought it would slop over. I so. know, but how are you supposed to do Obviously, it? Obviously, we didn't well, know. Well, you never left Colorado, so I guess. I'm never up. going from here. No, I don't know. How do you, oh, okay, well, know. well, if anybody knows, put it in the comments below. Yeah, Continue, okay. So I draw, we drive up here slowly. So I make an appointment with Robert Moreno and I made sure that all my tattoos were covered <laughs> and all my piercings so that I would be, you know, focus ready. So I walk in and now, it's Did Robert. you have a job? No, this, no, 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 You were no, just no. a homemaker, right? Oh yeah, I was, what do you mean just Well, I mean, you, you... I was a mom, stay-at-home mom. You had a... Some, yeah. yeah, okay. Yes, and I worked with the, you know, the PTA stuff. So I got meet with Robert and he said, okay, we just started a volunteer department at Focus. And so I'm gonna introduce you to Sharon Jackson. And I'm like, okay. So he goes, okay, just give me a minute. So he makes an appointment right then for me to meet with Sharon. So I come around the corner and she's looking around her cubicle like, a ward of the court is gonna volunteer here. With the finger so for you. I know, yes, yeah, so I hi. And she she's like, Oh, oh, I wasn't sure what was gonna come around the corner. So we sat down and we start chatting and she said, you know, 
we just started this volunteer department and we're going to have our very first banquet and we're going to have like 40 people and I have never done anything for 40 people and I'm like 40 people that's Sunday breakfast at my house what are you talking <laughs> you about a very big Italian family. family what's 40 people I said I can help you with 40 people and she goes oh that'd be great she goes but that's not going to take up your 40 hours of community service so she said there we have a list of departments that are looking for volunteers so let me see what's on my list so she's going down the list she goes well and how long had focus on the family been in Colorado Springs they were downtown uh, 91 and they had just built the building ninety and ninety three, and that's when we moved in ninety three. Matter of oh, fact, we so watched they were, it. Being, they were brand new. Yeah, we too. watched it being built. Okay. So that's how brand new it was. So she said, "We're having this volunteer banquet, and yes, you can help me, but he, that's not going to be forty hours." So she's going down the list of different departments that had asked for volunteers. So she goes, "Well, there's the, our IT department." <laughs> IT stand for. Let me think about that. Um, and she goes, and there's guest relations. Well, I am an it girl. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? They should have hired you. you. Need a, yeah, you need a model. <laughs> <laughs> no. So they were, I was like, you know, there's this hands down IT. Uh, and it's like, no, I will take the guest relations. She said, well, all you have to do is just greet people at the front. And I said, that's perfect. I can greet people at the front. Maybe I'll run into my friends <laughs> that I just met down there. Um, so she said, okay. Okay, so they put me in the guest relations department, and oh, I have to give you a little addendum. We did get insurance, but we had to go downtown, down an alley, knock three times on the door, and ask for Guido. But it was <laughs> great, a great insurance. So, all good. So then I'm in guest relations. We opened the welcome yeah. center, and I was just a, a volunteer. I did my 40 hours of volunteer, and they said, "Could we pay you to do this?" I said, you want to pay me to do this job? Okay. So I just... <laughs> Wait, you were you were thinking you wanted a job? No, I wasn't because looking for a job. Because you weren't looking for a job. No. Why did you say yes? Because it was only going to be two days a week. Okay. On a Tuesday and Thursday, I said, as long as I can be home when my kids get home. Because they were in high school. Mm -hmm. So I volunteered from 10 to 2. Oh. And I was home by the time they were home. So it ended up being a really great but, job. So the job was just two days a week? Two days. And then it was three days. And then Serafina graduated from college, and then they said, Kay, would you like a full time job? Okay. And I said, Yes, I would. And that was 26 years ago. All right, so now the reason I'm here yes. this week is because Make a Wish yes. had wanted to send somebody yes. to focus on the family, mainly uh, Adventures in Odyssey, Wits and the Visitor Center. Yes. And so I was part of that. That's what I'm doing here mm -hmm. this week. We recorded a show, and mm -hmm. we included um, his name was Sam in the in the show. And you, from going from two days a week mm -hmm. greeting people, you were in charge of managing his whole visit. Yes, Every with the help of some a lot of people on our Odyssey team was amazing. Megan, I'm giving you a shout but out. What is your title now? Um, it is manager of guest relations, but I love my subtitle, which is hospitality specialist. I thought it was hospitality queen. Oh, hospitality wow. specialist. Wow. So basically, you don't just run guest relations, though. Well, Do you, I, I want to find out. Yes. Because you've hosted and yes. organized all kinds of events, I yes? Know, it's so fun. There's a little line at the bottom of my job that says, Other duties as assigned. And Other duties as <laughs> So tell us about some of the most extraordinary things you've been a part of. What's the fangirl up to this week? To find out, stay tuned till after the credits. I had the opportunity, besides the Make-A-Wish, we've had over 15 terminally ill children choose us. And from the Make-A-Wish Foundation, Dreams Come True, Magic Moments, Indian Summer Cancer Camp, St. Jude's Hospital. Wow. And it's because of Odyssey. These children are, are ill and their playground becomes their imagination and their imagination is filled with Odyssey. And they choose us when they could have 
ending thing. It's pretty amazing. It's and you always want to make their visits extremely memorable. Right, for them. So each visit is tailored for Perfect. each individual child, uh, depending on their favorite character. And I have a whole list of questions. What is your favorite this, favorite that? So that I can make this adventure while they're here fit them. Let me give you another example besides Sam. Uh, we had a little gal and her favorite thing were princesses. She had leukemia and her favorite color was pink and so it's like okay. Glen Airy is the navigators and it is a castle and it is beautiful. Oh. So we were not only going to have her the um, plenary is a, a place It's a here place. It's a, yes, Springs. it was built by Colonel Palmer for his wife, so he was the founder of Colorado Springs. And oh. he actually built her a castle on the most beautiful grounds in wow. Colorado Springs. And so I thought, okay, she loves princesses, and I knew someone that worked out at the castle. So I called Debbie, and I said, we've got this little girl that's coming. She's going to come to focus on Wednesday. They're going to get here on Monday, and the altitude's going to be hard on her. So let's give her a warm-up by going to the castle. And I said, she needs to have tea in the castle. And um, I said, but you're going to pay for it. Uh, Glen Airy does like a high tea. And um, she said, okay, we will pay for that. Uh -huh. So we should, Debbie planned this whole tea thing. And so now we're hiding in the bushes when they pull up in their car. <laughs> and they thought it was just going to be like they a They thought house. they were getting robbed. Well, or they thought it was going to be a house <laughs> that looked like a castle. Uh -huh. But it's a beautiful, you look it up, Glen Airy Navigators. The castle is, and the grounds are phenomenal. So there, we're hiding in the bushes, and she, they're getting out of the car. Little tiny thing, and her hair was How just coming was in. She was um, seven. Oh. So her hair was just, you know, coming in, and so they're looking at what in the world is going on. So then you walk up this path with all these beautiful flowers. Ah, we pop out of the bushes. Hey. Um, <laughs> And then when we get up to the castle doors, great big doors that are there. And Debbie goes, knock on the doors of the castle. And they're like an arch shape. So this little tiny fist goes, knock, knock, knock. And the doors open. And Debbie had one of the gals dress up in a Victorian princess costume. And she, the, uh, the long dress and the gloves and the hair was piled up. And she opens the door and she goes, welcome to my home. And this little girl's eyes, oh. And so she, Debbie had also set aside a room with a pink tablecloth and pink beads and pink t teacups and had little pastries. And so the little family, her brother and her and mom and dad and the princess sat at this little table, drank tea. She had a little oh. pinky up. And then we took a tour of the castle. And wow. as we're walking, mom goes, did you know that her first wish was focus on the family? And her second wish, if she couldn't have focus, was to have tea with a princess in a castle. What? Wow. And Ooh, that I had, just gave me goosebumps. We had no idea. Wow. And you can just see how God orchestrates for these, each of the kids. And now Something we had Sam. Special. So Sam's was not like any other wish that we have filled because it fit this 13 year old who was coming to visit wow, us. Wow, that's amazing. So when they just opened the visitor center when yeah. you had gotten after yeah. you got off parole yeah <laughs> you started working there i look really good in orange by the way and were they planning to build wits end no originally wits end was an afterthought and so here we have this great visitor center and it was one of those things like we should have a wits end why did we Think about a wit's end. Because <laughs> Odyssey's an afterthought. I, 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 guess. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. know. But they just didn't think about what what could be. So, But somebody did think. The original wit's end was just a small little thing, and we served frozen Well, wait, they yogurt. opened in 93. Nin 94, the Welcome 94. And we only started on the air in 87. Yeah, so, so it had only been like long. five years on the air. And would it keep going was the question. Would this right. some, be something that would be worth investing to make this little thing? So it was actually a small little space. We served frozen yogurt, uh, vanilla, and chocolate in a swirl, popcorn. And then we added hot dogs and oat. But that, I know, woo, but that was it. But it became such a huge hit that we needed more space. And the family that gave us the Welcome Center, the Prince family from Holland, Michigan, um, helped. Oh, I met Elsa. Oh, yeah, Elsa. I met Elsa yes, in Holland. In Holland. Yeah. That was her. And so she gave us another 
large sent, uh, chunk of money so that we could expand. I didn't know that came from her. I yes. would have thanked her for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, but I have dreams. So I want more. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Roger, come over here. Come, come over on. here for a second. Just come over here for a second. I want you all to meet Roger Ingolia. Mr. Roger Ingolia. That's me. Okay, so <laughs> th when you guys moved, um, uh, he, they moved here. Roger's working at a grocery store. That's yes. It. Right. Now, so they're going to build Wits End, and how did you end up designing it and getting him involved? It had already begun in its small little infancy stages um, with just wit's end and then a little play area that was more based around last chance detectives and what like what's a last chance detectives so it had that like, was a video series exactly. that focused on the family produced live action right, right. adventure and we shared that downstairs area with the focus on the family leadership institute so we used to have a college class and it took up that whole back section um, from where the like the video cave is all of that all the way back but did not belong to Focus this this side did not belong to Wits End, so the hall ended right where that little tiny pathway is. Mm -hmm. That was not ours. That all belonged to them. So when we built the International Center and we threw them out, um, they said we need more office space. We said you are out of your stinking mind. We need more play space. Um, so who's we? You? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Like and what did you think about when she started working over at Focus? Well, I started working there before she did, actually. Oh, really? I left the grocery business after we came here in the grocery business, and and uh, I went to work for Focus. The same guy that got her the uh, the pardon through being oh, the so he jailbird. was already working there yeah. when you thought about doing your yeah. your yes. Oh, okay, yes. Now, you didn't tell me that part. Okay. Well, the end, the end result was she would come up with the ideas. And uh, I started um, actually working uh, at Focus uh, originally as a part-time temp. It was during that time. Wait, it as had a, to be a part-time part temp. Part-time temp. Okay, part-time temp. Temporary. So it wasn't part-time, but not permanent temp. Right. Okay. I was helping out with them building, starting to build what, did you what is now a, called the Discovery Emporium. Did you have a, a background in construction? My father was a building and painting contractor. So, so you, you knew gleaned a lot of that, sure. Well, he also is really good with woodwork and electricity and paint. And so we, we were able to acquire the classrooms and the offices one at a time. So I have a little tiny budget. So with a little tiny budget, we just did one room at a time. And making your husband do all the labor. Is that it was amazing how that worked. <laughs> hmm. uh, did yeah. you ever? Did you get compensated at all? For yes, with the joy. The that joy of, of yes. creating. Did she get compensated or did I get compensated? Which well, one are you Well, basically, asking? when they got Diane, they got Roger. Well, Tuck. when they got Diane, Roger stepped in as a part-time temp, helping out them building this, and then it evolved into me working full time with what the facilities department. What was the first department. idea? What was the first thing you created at Wits End? It was yes. such a collaborative because you had to, we had to work with the Odyssey team and also we had a, a couple other people that were creative as well to help. What, what colors are we going to use? What are the ideas? What do we think this space should be? So it just evolved. Like, as, did you have any artists, or was it all your ideas? Not all mine. No, no. We had, like I said, there was a team, and everybody brought something to the table. And okay, I can do this. Can you do that? I can make that. Can you make this? So he was really great at the building part or, or the rebuilding of something and and painting. And so it was like little by little, it just evolved. So as what we was moved the down first? The thing you did probably it, the discovery emporium because it was the biggest space that is so which that's one? where the couch the large couch was the theater that where they put the costumes on the puppets the big room that big room that's, but the wits end where they had food was that already decorated before you got there no it was all evolved and we actually had a set designer who had come in and had a lot of that stuff looks like it's wood but it's not it's styrofoam what um, to enjoy the full episode, please support us at patreon.com slash tell you later. Thanks a what lot. What was the most challenging thing you ever had to do? Ooh. Well, I'm just going to have to tell you later. All right. 
the Red River Valley is so blue. is a Patreon-driven entertainment show. So what are you waiting for? Come on over. Join us at patreon.com front slash tell you later. You know the Red River Valley is so blue And I reckon that it's on account of you That the birds are all a-singing And the bells are soon be ringing on oh, the Red River Valley, oh, the Red River Valley, oh, the Red River Valley ain't so blue. Watch my head. Huh, how am I supposed to do that? My eyes are in my head. Whoa, look at how cool this is. I love the last chance detectives. I wonder if they ever solved the mystery. Watch out this side, <gasps> a cave. <laughs>